Did you hear the Remember the Titans in Birmingham? They are totally Remember the Titans in Birmingham. October 16th, we'll see the release of Woodlawn, a movie by Alabama filmmakers Andrew and John Irwin. It's a film aimed at Christian audiences, centering around Birmingham's Woodlawn High School's desegregation in the early 70s, in particular the football team. The film, which, full disclosure, isn't out yet, so I haven't seen it, appears to culminate in the team coming together for the big matchup with crosstown rival Banks High School. It's based on a true story, so is it true? Did Woodlawn High School become an integration success story thanks to the liberal application of Christian morals and positive attitudes? Uh, not quite. To give you an example, this was the racial makeup of Woodlawn High School just a few years ago with a 95% black student body, 4% Hispanic, and 1% white. So what happened? Desegregation actually started in earnest for Birmingham schools in 1965. And while there are some accounts that there was a sweet spot for a few years in the 70s where Woodlawn was fairly well integrated, it didn't last. Starting during the racial tensions of the 60s and for decades to follow, the demographics of Birmingham were defined by a single concept, white flight. Thus begins our tale of two cities, Birmingham and Over the Mountain. Over the Mountain is sort of a slang term for a collection of suburbs just south of the city, including Homewood, Hoover, Mountain Brook, and Vestavia Hills. As the federal government and courts began enforcing desegregation in Birmingham schools, white people started hightailing it over the mountain in droves. How big of an exodus are we talking about? Between 1960 and 1970, the city of Vestavia Hills saw its population triple. Keep in mind at the time, people were leaving to the detriment of their own children's education. The Jefferson County School District was not equipped to deal with such an influx of students, leaving some classrooms with a ratio of more than 40 students to a teacher. But the hope for white parents was that it would take longer for the courts to force desegregation for Jefferson County schools. And it did for a time, but that time ended in in the late 60s when a court forced the county school district to stop dragging its heels. In one last desperate bid to avoid the inevitable, the people of Estavia Hills managed to finance and get approval for a new school district in under six months. But it was only a few months later that the court said, yeah, you guys have to integrate too. And if you're thinking surely there was another reason for Vestavia Hills to create its own school district, it wasn't just to fight desegregation, think again. In a 2008 interview for Tanner Colby's book, Some of My Best Friends Are Black, The Strange Story of Integration in America, then Vestavia Hills High School principal Cass McWaters had this to say about the founding of the school district. Anybody tells you this school didn't break off to try and stay all white is lying through their teeth. So how did this leave Woodlawn High School and the surrounding community? Not great. As white people fled the city, they were followed by an exodus of middle-class black people in the ensuing decades, taking with them a sizable portion of the city's tax base. As time went on, Birmingham started to see an increase in urban blight, abandoned buildings, and dilapidated housing. And it wasn't just the tax base slipping away. Fewer students meant a decrease in state funding for Birmingham city schools. Some of the district's aging buildings started falling into disrepair, including Woodlawn, where the urban legend was that teachers who wanted to use the restroom would have to go across the street to the McDonald's. As Birmingham city schools limped into the 2000s, there was talk of shutting down 90-year-old Woodlawn High School for good. But that didn't happen. In 2007, the school underwent a renovation. In 2011, the district instituted magnet programs to get kids ready for certain career paths, and Woodlawn became a home to the Academy of Business and Finance, which gives kids the training and certifications they need for a career in business. In recent years, graduation rates and ACT scores have been on the rise, and the trend of students leaving the school district at a rate of over 1,000 students a year is starting to level off. So there you go. We're starting to see the beginning of a happy ending just a scant 40 years after when the upcoming Woodlawn movie is set. But the film has Rudy in it. Who doesn't love Rudy? Of course, we'll have more coverage of the film's release. I'm Jonathan Soboleski for AL.com.